Okay, hello friends. We have made it to the distal most joint that we're going to discuss uh, in these practical or dissection supplementary videos that we're going to discuss in terms of the upper limb, and that's going to be our radiocarpal joint. And as its name would suggest, this is going to be between the radius, which you can see here, and the proximal row, or your first row of carpal bones. Particularly, we're talking about the scaphoid and the lunate. There'll be some articulation with the trichetrum. It does not articulate with the pisiform. The pisiform has some other roles. We'll talk about those in subsequent sessions. Now, I knew this was the radius. I already labeled it. I knew it was the radius because of the two forearm bones, the more distal you get, the radius gets wider. And that is not true of what's happening with the ulna on the medial side. So we remember, ulna is going to be medial always, radius is always lateral. The ulna is fairly um, significantly wider and more robust when we're talking about its more proximal portions, the portions that are going to be associated with the elbow joint, whereas the radius gets wider in order to articulate with those proximal row of the, of the carpal bones, and that's why it's going to have this wider portion here to allow for that articulation. You do not have a true articulation with the ulna and the carpal bones. In fact, you'll have a little articular disc right in, right in between these regions, so not a true articulation here. So, that radiocarpal joint between the radius and the carpal bones, we are looking at a dorsal view here, which is the same thing as a posterior view. Dorsal is a more traditional term. It used to be used quite a bit more. It's used in other areas like zoology, etc. If you've ever heard of a dorsal fin in terms of a fish, a shark, that kind of thing, it means associated with the back. Well, when we're talking about human anatomy, we've really transitioned more to the terminology posterior or anterior, which more traditionally was referred to as ventral. But when we're talking about the hand and the feet, or the hands and the feet, we still use the term dorsal fairly commonly. So we're looking at a dorsal view here, and that's what this ligament here that's kind of encompassing and covering that proximal row of carpal bones, as well as that dorsal portion of the radius. So this is going to be the dorsal radiocarpal ligament. And as you can see, it's completely occluding the view of the proximal row of the, the carpal bones. Now, if we're looking at an anterior view, like in this image, so we're looking at an anterior view, or if we're using the traditional terminology, a ventral view. So remember, anterior, uh, when we're in anatomical position, that's going to have the palms facing forward, and so this is kind of the more palmar region. Obviously, this is a fairly deep dissection here. So we've removed like the transverse carpal ligament that's going to be associated, or excuse me, the transverse carpal ligament is going to be around this region here. This deeper structure is going to be the palmar radiocarpal ligament. So this is the palmar radiocarpal ligament. Once again, occluding the view of the carpal bones because it's going to be covering this whole region. It's going to be an intrinsic ligament, so it's basically a thickening of that capsule. So we know we're on the anterior view because we have that fairly uh, obvious tunnel being formed, which would uh, allow, if we had these in this particular specimen, those long tendons to go through there. So this isn't what the palmar radiocarpal ligament is not what's actually forming the carpal tunnel. That's going to be a little bit more distal. This is what's going to be forming or is going to be a thickening of that articular capsule. We do have collateral ligaments associated with the wrist, and once again, as I mentioned in the previous video associated with the elbow joint region, you do want to make sure that you are specific in terms of your terminology because you have an ulnar collateral ligament of both the elbow joint as well as the wrist joint. So make sure that you write that whole thing out, even though it's fairly obvious when you're looking at this that you're not really looking at the elbow, you're more in the hand and wrist region. Now, being able to tell which one is going to be the radio, radial carpal 
excuse me, radio, radial, oh my goodness, I'm going to say it nice and slow to make sure that I can get it out there. The radial collateral ligament is going to be on this side, and I knew this because of this thickened and much larger distal portion makes this the radius. So this yellow shaded ligament here is your radial collateral ligament. And then the ulna, you can see, has become significantly kind of thinner in this region. And so the ulnar collateral ligament is going to be this ligament that's going to be shaded in orange right here. All right, so these are the main things that are going to be visible um, in some of the plastinated specimens that we have or in a dissection. So make sure that you can at least get these basics of these particular uh, portions of the radiocarpal ligament. As always, please, please do feel free to reach out to me or any of my anatomy colleagues. We love to talk the wrist joint. It's one of our favorites. Thank you and have a great day.